originally called the Hackney Pluck. I'm not sure what Bob's songs are about, but someone said it was about him having to climb out somebody's window because some girlfriend's boyfriend came home or something like that. That was actually about uh, being assaulted. It's a little narrative piece about something that happened one night. Bob was just, I think he might have just started playing, you know, doing a bit of a tune-up, and then I joined in with, with the sounds he was making, and Kay and Malcolm came in with uh, their parts and it just all fell together. That was the bats with Don't Say Goodbye. Goodbye. The 80s were a, a very interesting time, a time of a lot of change in New Zealand, but it was, it was a really good time to be making music, that's for sure. That is my idea the bat started at the end of 82. I was flatting with Kay, and so we started mucking around on guitar. He saw that I had the guitar and just sort of started playing songs and just inviting me to play simple songs. Paul soon, soon jumped in and um, we thought we'd better find a drummer and, and everyone knew Malcolm was a great drummer, so it was pretty seamless and pretty easy to, to start the band, yeah. I think our first gig might have been in Dunedin, New Year's Eve. And then we did, started doing more normal gigs like pubs and um, university shows. We ended up saying, let's do some recording, but we'll just do it ourselves. We won't go to any huge big recording studios, we'll just go to the local guy who does demos for people. <laughs> Getting the first recording done was a big thing, so it was the By Night EP, so we knew we had to get, uh, get the recording done to the best of our ability. So we travelled on by night and watched our journey in today. The By Night EP was fun to make. It was driving around in a car. We were over in Littleton as well, standing in front of a boat. And it had a great big orange face to it with no portholes in it because it was freight. And uh, I thought it would be great to film against that. It's, it's pretty ropey and, and roughly recorded, but um, it, was, it was a pretty big thing for us at the time. We were able to amass enough money to um, buy airfares to the UK. Somehow got a bunch of gigs in London and up in Scotland. We just sort of got, you know, bigger and bigger audiences and we're going further afield. Things started to build up for us then because we got recognised by some of the music media. Our music worked over there as well. People would come out and really enjoy it. So that was a real, that was a real eye opener. That's outside here, out the front. Our first album, Daddy's Highway. Half recorded in Glasgow and half recorded back here in Christchurch. And there is one of the... Oh, that, I think that's the one we used for the, the cover. By the um, late 80s, we were using bigger studios and bigger budgets. Um, and there was slightly more involvement from the record companies. It had kind of backfired on us a bit. You feel like suddenly you're out of control to a degree with what you're doing. Yeah, you end up getting a bit bogged down sometimes. Yeah, but it has, it has its pros, obviously. Made Up in Blue was actually recorded in a, an overnight session in a, a London um, studio. We were 
a lot tighter and, and there was a lot better gear. So that, that song came out sounding really, really good. And it was in a beautiful big 24-track uh, studio and I think we knew someone who knew someone. That uh, film was slipping in the in the frame and in the camera because it wasn't working properly so it was making a weird strobing kind of thing. Initially we were thinking, oh bugger, but then I thought, no, that looks quite cool. <laughs> We did a big tour across America with Radiohead in '93, and that was that was pretty cool because we were, you know, playing to big crowds. Yeah, we saw Radiohead, which were a huge, huge band, and they were in this tour bus, and I was thinking, do I want to be touring around in a tour bus that much? Records were starting to lose ability to sell because CDs got released. The momentum of sales tend to drop off and it coincided also with a, a change in fashion from our kind of indie kind of music through to a grunge kind of thing. We've never changed what we're doing to try and um, appease or keep fans or, or follow genres. We are very much, this is what we do. If you, if you like it, that's cool. And if you don't, that's, that's fine as well. It's gone in a, in, a, in, a, in a pattern where we're now back to doing our own home recordings again because uh, digitally it's easy to do. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's fun, you can do lots of things and it's easy. We kept recording, we put out another album in 96 and then we just had a wee bit of a slowdown. We've done 10 albums in 36 years along with a few other recordings, EPs and things, so that's probably what fits. We're not too hell-bent on working all the time, put it that way. We've got a lot of raw working and stuff, so. We're just kind of doing what we feel like. There's no pressure. We just keep making the music we like. There's so much music around at the moment, and there's a lot of very average music, so I, I, I sort of think I've got to constantly prove myself as a songwriter and, and the band. We're not trained musicians, we don't read music, we don't know other genres and you know, we just play what we what we love to play. Having been through so much musically, I think we're very grounded so it's not like, well we've made it because there's, there's no such thing as making it.